Coach Josh Moore, Cleveland State Vikings. Coach Moore, welcome to the Go High Outcast podcast. I'll tell you what, you and I wanted it tonight. We battled. We battled to get on here tonight, didn't we? Nah, it was a long go, but we got it done. <laughs> Over a half an hour. Good, good half to get, hour. Of... To get Zoom connected, right? Like with audio. Yeah, I blame Absurd, it on right? you, then. I blame it on you. I I had my end all all good to go. I don't know. I'll take it. I'll take the yeah. blame. The fact that you stuck with me <laughs> says something. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so this no this year so far, you're the team I've covered the most in college wrestling. Uh, CSU. I've had two of your duels. Actually, you guys in Lake Erie College um, because I did your pit duel, and then I did your duel with uh, Lake Erie College. Oh, actually, yeah, and I did your uh, – Clarion duel. So you guys are the team I've covered the most. So I like that. I know you like that too. Yeah. Oh, we loved having you out, Zeb. Yeah. Appreciate it. Glad you live so close. You guys battled hard uh, against Clarion. Clarion was the most impressive uh, duel. Not that you didn't battle hard against Pitt. Just felt like you guys might have been a little overmatched against Pitt. And Pitt's got a really good team. They're runner up at Midlands. They just got a super solid squad. And um, that that's tough. You know, 184 was a great match. And I think a lot of your NCAA qualifiers, uh, Marcus did not wrestle against Pitt. And I think that would have been a good test for him with Casto. Don't you think? Yeah, we were, I mean, definitely looking forward to that one. And uh, I thought early on, at least in that match and early on, he didn't look like he was, you know, uh, close to being in, uh, in great shape and ready to wrestle. So I think Marcus, I think it would have been a great match, but yeah, Marcus, Unfortunately, got hurt during a Russell off, um, hit his eye pretty bad and was out for about four weeks. Missed uh, the Pitt duel, missed the Purdue duel, Chattanooga. Um, but he's back. So it's all that matters. We were a little bit scared. He was going to be out for a longer time. But, um, yeah, he's back in the lineup and starting to put it all together. Marcus technically has one year left if he wants to take it with COVID, his transfer from Buffalo. He does technically have another year left, he told me, at Lake Erie College. What do you think the chances – I know you can't speak for Marcus, but I know you want him back. What do you think the chances of that are? Yeah, I mean, just being honest, I think going in like last year and end of the year, then going into – earlier part of the year, I think he was, um, you know, all about it. And then now I think he's trending the other way slightly um, for whatever reason, but, you know, I don't, I mean, we joke around from time to time, but I think at this point we're just, you know, focused on this year for him. Um, don't want to kind of get him thinking too far ahead and worry about that. So we're just more of like, Hey, let's focus on this year. We'll get through this year and then we'll, uh, break that conversation back up when when we get through it but yeah I'm, I'm going with just 50 50 you know i'm just going to say 50 50 right now and then you have uh you guys made program history last year you had your first mid-american conference champion with ben smith he's from north kent hoover uh really tough guy made you know obviously that's huge for your program you get your first mid-american conference champion since joining the conference and uh is this your guys' fourth year in the conference, I believe, Josh? Yeah, fourth year. So that's huge for as fast as you guys had a MAC champion, you know, leaving the EWL. So Ben actually had an opportunity where he was able to wrestle in the EWL when he started, I believe, right? Yeah, his first, his freshman year, he started as a true freshman um, for us at 197. Um, so wrestled four straight years with the COVID year, had a red shirt. And is taking it this year. And then he, so you will have Ben Smith back next year at yeah. 197 pounds. He will be the MAC champ from two years. Well, it'll be two years ago in the season that he's in because he was the MAC champ last year. And then you have another NCAA qualifier on the tree uh, on the team in um, uh, Nassar, right? Andre. Yep. DeAndre, who squats Volkswagens, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's, he's trying. He's trying to. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. He's got, uh, you know, I'd say everybody's kind of like, hey, what's wrong with DeAndre? Like, you know, he's not ranked. He's not winning those matches. But, um, 
you know, he, he's been, he's wrestled kind of the same as he has the last couple of years, but he just kind of fallen short in some of those matches um, this year, he typically won, you know, seven out of 10 of those close bouts. And I think he's lost seven out of 10 this year, but um, his head's on right now. I think he's refocused. Definitely. Um, you know, it's in the back of his mind. He knows what's going on. He knows he's losing these matches and he's not happy about it. So um, we, uh, we feel good about him kind of getting back to the old Deandre and starting to win these close matches and we need them. I mean, if we're, we talked to our guys about being Mac champs this year and, you know, when we have, you know, the guys that we have on the team, you know, with Marcus and DeAndre and, um, you know, some other guys. I mean, I think it's uh, important for a guy that's been to Nationals before to kind of step up. So the expectations are pretty high for him. We need him him to be in the finals at the MAC Championships for us to have a chance to win this thing. So, like, can you say that, uh, you know, we can win the MAC title. You guys can win the MAC title because you can win the MAC title. It's like last year your brother's team, you know, uh, Lock Haven got hot. Central Michigan faltered a little bit, and they rode that wave, right? They rode those lower weights, and they rode the wave. And they had some other placers. They had a couple finalists, a couple champs, and they got the job done. And they win the MAC title. Your brother's the, you know, your twin brother Scott Moore is the MAC Coach of the Year, which I know you're proud of your brother, but you want to beat your brother at the same time. Right. I, I get that. Oh, I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if but, another team's going to win it, you know, might as well be lock Haven. But uh, yeah, I mean, we, we've we been, you know, competitive in the Mac, you know, fifth, sixth, just um, even last year, you know, we, we, had, we on eight guys wrestled the Mac championships. Everybody else had, well, I think everybody had 10, but we had eight guys. We had Daniel Patton who placed as a true freshman, um, year before unfortunately got hurt in the Kent duel had some um some nerve damage and missed you know the last two months of the season so you know if he comes back and and places last year and then we had you know some uh 41 we had our guy injured and uh another guy but both guys are actually injured so um you know so we have we have those guys come in place I mean we're we probably move up a couple spots pretty quickly but it is, you know, that's the name of the game, staying healthy. So, um, but our guys, our guys wrestled well last year, the MAC championship. So, so you got a big transfer, six a six year transfer, a local kid, a state champ for Nordonia. You got Anthony Prine. Anthony looked the best I've ever seen him look against Claren. He knocks off a goalie. But goalie's a qualifier at heavyweight in twenty twenty. Did you realize that the goalie was yeah. a qualifier at heavyweight in 2020? Yep. Big, massive guy. And Anthony, Anthony, quite frankly, blew his doors off. Those three takedowns to none, or might have been four takedowns to none. I mean, he looked amazing in that match. How do you get that Anthony Perrine down the stretch, the MAC duels, the MAC championship? Uh, I mean, honestly, I mean, he's he's bringing a lot of that himself. I mean, he's like, comes in the room, he's excited. He's having fun. I think with him, you know, you kind of got to let him be Anthony sometimes and let him do his thing and let him feel good. If he's feeling good, excited, and like, he's happy, like he can, he can wrestle. Um, I don't know, you know, what, how his coaches treated him in the past, but um, he's self-motivated. I mean, I don't think we've had to get on him too much about working hard. I mean, maybe he's weighed a little bit <laughs> from time to time. I mean, my man, my man gets a little big at times. He gets heavy, doesn't he? He's but a, like he's a horse, man. Has never. I mean, he's always made weight. Um, definitely was worried about it when I, <laughs> when uh, all joking aside, when he came this summer for physicals, and I, I think he was two thirty eight. Oh my god! Yeah, uh, he trims uh, up good though. <laughs> he trims up good. Yeah, he looks he up good. good on his face, and he trims up good on the body. I like that. You gotta yeah. understand that guy wrestled, I think, two years of heavyweight. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, no, Anthony's. I mean, he's brought a lot to the team. Like honestly, not just. I mean, he he's winning matches and you know providing a good workout partner for Ben Smith, um, for Joey Lyons, for DeAndre. I mean, that that was part of the plan with him coming in. But um, 
just a character, you know, I'm sure you interviewing him. You I can like kind him. Of him and, I like him. He's yeah, got a good family. Yeah. The guy jokes around. He picks on, picks on people in a good way. I mean, he, he's, um, you know, we kind of, <laughs> We call him like the guy on the couch, like he sleeps in the locker room because he commutes from home. <laughs> so he's always sleeping on the couch. But yeah, I mean, you, the guy I, on the I, couch. I love yeah, it. I, uh, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, things worked out the way they worked out. Not only, I mean, for both of us, you know, and when, when he came up on the visit, we were like, Hey, it's, it's a good situation for both of us. And you say that, you know, with, with the best thoughts in mind, but you really don't know you're bringing a guy in a 60 year that's 40 pounds overweight. You really don't know how that's going to work out. But You know, like at that point, it's like, what can you really do? You know what I mean? Like it's, he's in his sixth year. Can you really coach him up? Right? Like he's setting his ways. He's going to do what he does. But yeah. I tell you what, he, he, he wrestled Bonacorsi hard in that pit duel. <clears throat> and the Bagoli win was huge. And if that is a sign of things to come, that guy can break through and we could see him in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I, I mean, I'd love to see that, you know, I'm an Ohio Homer through and through, but let me talk about my Northwest Ohio guy. You got yeah. an Seco guy on the team who uh, I, I'm a big fan of Manly. Manly's yeah. a stud. Manly's massive for the weight. That guy made 125. Let's talk about that. <laughs> How's that guy made 125? And he's a massive 33. He's yeah. super explosive. Oh yeah. His, we tell him every day, like his, the way he moves and his offense, like it's spectacular. I mean, he's, he's got some special, special tools that really were just like, just trying to build confidence. I mean, he's, he can take down anybody. I mean, he took can, down Philippi like it was nothing. Yeah. He's starting to ride better. I mean, he started just, you know, he's still in his third year, his first year, like you said, he made 125. It was tough. He, I mean, you talked to him about it. He wanted to quit. Like, he was like, I don't like making weight. I don't like losing. Like, this COVID stuff sucks. Like, he 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 straight out told us, like, I, I was almost not going to come back after my first year. And then, you know, I, I joke around about this, but I'm like, dude, and I didn't even see you that next summer. Like, what were you doing? And then he started his sophomore year up, and I think he just was refreshed and kind of told himself, like, hey, if I'm going to do this, like, I'm going to, I'm going to put more into it. And last year we saw some huge improvements from, from them uh, from the start of the year to the end of the year. Just, I mean, the Mac championships. Yeah. I think he did he take fifth maybe, but he was like putting up points, you know, 12, 14 points on, you know, um, two or two of the guys at the Mac championships and uh, had to put in a good summer, like trained hard this summer, lifted, did all the right things and kind of started where he left off. And um Still not, I'll say still not having the season we thought he could have, but I mean, the guy's rustling, you know, Braden Palmer, who's a top 25 guy to honestly, you know, he picks neutral in the third period. He, he has a good chance to win. I mean, he has, a, he had the kid from Purdue beat and gives up a takedown with zero seconds left. You know, he's beat. Oh, that was the bad, the horrible call where there was no time. Yeah. yeah. Out of bounds too. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, look at how it goes. That's how it goes, though. You tell them that I'm not. I know you're like, hey, these are big yeah. ten guys. You can't, you can't sleep. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, flat footed. Yeah, he's 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 coming around. Like he's doing doing good things, working hard. But uh, I think the the best is yet to come with him. Like he said, his freshman year he wrestled five matches. He actually got uh, his roommate got COVID two weeks before the MAC championship, so he didn't get a chance to wrestle the MAC tournament his freshman year. He got con contacted out so um i mean i can't it's hard to even count that year so really it's like his second year starting to figure it out i mean the best years are ahead of him he was one of those guys who got his chance at winning a state title stolen from him exactly and that was that sucked because otsego has only had a couple state champs and then you know he could have you know he could have changed their program i think they got some tough kids i think his brother's tough um, and you know, it's, it, it sucks when a Northwest Ohio kid like that. And, you know, it's like, you ever been to Tentogany, Ohio, dude? I don't know. Probably there, not. There, there ain't much going on. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that right now. There ain't a whole yeah. lot going on in Tentogany, but it's yeah. like, you, you hate to see a guy like that get his opportunity stolen, but it's, it's nice to see that he's having a good D one career so far. And like you said, I think the best is yet to come for him. Um, 
Yeah, well, he got a, he got a chance to wrestle uh, Lucian Brink at the Michigan State Open, who they were one and two at the state, you know, the rankings. So that would have yeah. been the guy, and he uh, he beat him. So we we use that, you know, um, tough match. The kid the kid's tough. He actually he's coached by uh, a Kent State guy, Sean Collins. I don't know if you remember him um, from Coshocton. He was a yeah Shocktown. Yeah, it's a thirty three pounder. I think. Remember working out with him a little bit, but is is uh Lucian Brink at Northern? Yeah. At Northern. Northern's got a good team this year. They do. There's they're scrappy. I mean, they're they can win the West. I think they're gonna win the West in duels. Um, in my opinion, I think that they're in the driver's seat to win the West in duels. Um yep. you guys, speaking of duels, uh 141, you had a nice win against Purdue. Yeah. Okay. Where's that guy been? Um well, he wrestled at Midlands. He wrestled so, at Midlands. yeah, we, we, you know, the plan was to red shirt him. Um, that was, you used one of his five dates for the Purdue duel. That's yeah, we used one. Got well, it. Well, I was, uh, that's what I yeah. wanted to know. Yeah, yeah. Michigan, he wrestled Michigan State Open. He won it, wrestled at Purdue, went 3 0, beat Phileas, beat Caleb Brooks, beat uh, another guy from Chattanooga, and then um, wrestled in Cleveland State Open. So he, he used three dates. He still has two dates left if. You know, we plan to redshirt him, but how did he do at uh, Midlands? Uh, he went three and two. He lost to uh Arizona State kid. Is it Vasquez or yeah? This guy's uh, pretty good. It, it was a scrap, and he beat the Zargo kid from Wisconsin. Was was uh was winning seven two, and the 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 kid injury defaulted out. I mean. But then the kid wrestled like the next week. So I don't know. I, I'm not okay. sure. Okay. So we're looking at you could have a potential. That's another guy. If you threw his hat into the ring this year, you're you guys are bringing some dogs back. You're bringing some serious firepower next year for Cleveland State. You, um, South Carolina kid. What's his name? Uh, Layton. Dylan Layton. Dylan Layton is South. South. I'm right. Yeah. He's a South, Dylan yeah. Layton, South Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. He so could. Dylan he could. Layton. He's he's the real deal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you Dylan Layton right now him. has quality wins against Big Ten guys. He could pry qualify this year if you guys were like, Hey, we got to go with him. All the other seven 141s got hurt. We got to go with him. You could probably go with him and he'd probably qualify. Yeah, more than likely. More than likely, that guy he'll bring a spot and he'll probably qualify. Yeah, hey, what's yeah, the number a... this year? Is 15 the number for matches? Nobody, nobody knows the number. Nobody seems. Everybody I've asked. Nobody. Uh, 17, 15, 14. I hear. I hear. A, what? What's the number? What's the threshold to, to draw a spot? Well, I feel like you got. I mean, you should have like twenty matches by the time. I understand out. that. Yeah, not to go back. Yeah, we had this discussion before. I think nobody I knows know. the number, Josh. Nobody. Yeah. I don't think any. And I talk to you guys all regularly. Between you, Matt Hill, Jimmy. Stutzman, I'll text. I talk to Joel. I talked to like I'll talk to guys on a monthly basis. You on the weekly, Jimmy on the weekly. Usually about every month with, with you know I'll pop Greenlee in, and then you know I, there's a lot of D1 coaches I talk to regularly, <laughs> or I'll interview them, and none, nobody knows the number. I don't know. We, we we can find out for you. How about that? Well, I mean we're gonna find <laughs> out, but I want to know that number. Yeah, because it's such an important number because it draws a spot to your conference. And if you don't have that minimum threshold of matches, you don't draw a spot to your conference, and then you got to steal a spot or win the conference to go to the NCAs, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's important. It's I'm important. Not wrong. I'm not wrong. Am I wrong? If I'm wrong, I'll, you know, if I'm if I'm over no, it's... loudmouth and you guy, let me know. I'm okay. No, it's important. We'll we'll get it figured out. Yeah, I mean, I know I know this. The first coaches rankings start next week, so I'm not sure. Sh- Monday, Tuesday. You guys should so not be Monday. ranking the guys. That's enough. <laughs> you should not be ranking the guys. Yeah, oh, I know. Yeah. I'm sorry that I'm not sorry. You shouldn't be ranking the guys. Yeah. But then it goes into like old school system when like. They had the wild cards and the big 12 would be like, well, I want my guy to go vote for my guy. Don't vote for those guys. Vote for our guy. Then it just becomes politics at some point. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's definitely, they need to, 
I mean, I guess they figure like, hey, we're the ones around these kids. We watch more wrestling than anybody else, so we should rank kids. But yeah, it's uh, don't think it's the the best way to do it. But until it's they not. find a better way, and then, I mean, okay, we, the the solution is what do you turn it over to Willie Saylor and Mark Fader and wh whoever else in all the media outlets? I don't even I don't even have an answer. Yeah, I, 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 like I like oh Zeb, you're sitting here criticizing it, but you don't have an answer. Yeah, that's true. But yeah. I know the best thing is not coaches ranking guys because they want to rank their own guys. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like we use Russell stat for the Mac and I think for the ACC, they do the same thing. So instead of coaches sitting in there arguing for their guys and voting when, you know, when it just, it's politics. Data. It spits out data. Yeah. So Those Russell common stat. opponents, how they did, it does data. Yeah. I yeah. Know what you're saying. But it, but it's not, I mean, it's something we everybody agreed on, so it takes out the argumentative, yeah. you know, nature of it. But yeah, I don't. I mean, when it's fine. I mean, it just you know the conference championships they do the seeds, and I mean you're gonna have to basically beat everybody anyway, right? I mean, that's what they yeah, say. Yeah, I get it. I, I, I mean, I get it, but it's just you understand where I'm coming from because it just becomes the richer getting rich, and then just. <laughs> It just makes me mad, you know that. Come on. Yeah, nah, I get it, I get it. But yeah, well, it's it's tough. Like everybody says, the small schools, you know, try to. It's hard to get into the rankings, and then once you get in, if you lose to somebody, another Matt kid that's pretty good, you get kicked out, and then you know it's. But yeah, I mean that's that's where scheduling comes into play. I mean, you got to wrestle a schedule that gives your guys an opportunity to get those ranked wins. Um, that, and that's huge. Like you, you can't just, you know, Russell. Well, there's no easy teams, but you can't yeah. just, can't just Russell conference teams. You got to go out and find some big 10 teams. You got to go out and find, you know, we Russell, we put Pitt on the schedule. We're like, well, they're going to have at least five ranked get kids. So that's five opportunities, you know, um, Purdue, same thing. I mean, my assistants from Purdue. So that kind of helped out, but, um uh, yeah i mean the and we we got one good win there against purdue we were hoping to get a couple more um but sometimes you walk away with one ranked win and you got to be happy with it i mean dylan layton i'm looking at his bio dylan layton has a one sentence bio dude <laughs> <laughs> I, I, how do you find this guy how do you find dylan layton how do you find that dude what are you looking at on our website yeah I'm like, what, what, like, like, I remember, like, uh, you looked at Nick Badlands, you looked at uh, Dustin Kilgore's, and these guys had these like super long resumes. I'm looking at Dylan Layton's. He was ranked number 25 nationally by Brockman. He was the number one wrestler in the state of South Carolina, 132 pounds. He's a two time South Carolina state champion. He holds a two year record of 72 and three. That's it. But it talks about his charity events, raising money for families more than it talks about his wrestling career, selling Christmas trees. That that uh, it tells you more about Dylan Layton selling Christmas trees than it does his actual career. So this guy is a guy though who didn't probably do a ton of wrestling, and didn't you know it wasn't like he was a PA or Ohio kid growing up. He was in South Carolina. He's got a lot of a lot of a lot of legs left, a lot of upside. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, so he. It's funny you say that because he actually hit his one of his coaches is from Pennsylvania, and that's how I got connected with him. So, a guy named uh, Ryan Shaw coached at South Moreland, PA. I recruited the heavyweight Jake Beistel, end up going somewhere to play football, and then I think he transferred to Division two or three wrestling school. But um, so he moved down there years and years ago and was telling me about this kid. And I'm thinking, okay, the kids from South Carolina, like. Don't, you're not come gonna on, trick come me. On. Don't, don't be yeah. feeding me no South Carolina guy. Come on. Yeah. So yeah, and then and then um still pretty under the radar. Even you win a South Carolina state title, like really who's still looking at you? But he um he trained out of a pretty good club. The club coach wrestled at Rutgers. He wrestled at um some big events, like he would go to Super 32. He would go wrestle in, in uh a lot of events to you know to get his name out there. Um, so that's kind wasn't of scared. I like that. Yeah, no, definitely not scared, but yeah, travel was willing to travel to go 
train at different places and get more competition. But, uh, but yeah, we picked him up pretty early, which I think was good. He, he definitely did pretty well after we signed him, And I think he was starting to get calls from other schools, but he stayed loyal to us and, you know, we appreciate that and providing him a good opportunity. Um, so it all worked out. He's doing a heck of a job at the Christmas trees and raising money. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> We need to, we need I, I to think work on our... a little bit more than that right now because when you put his uh, his his uh, profile together next year, it's going to look like a hit list. Yeah, we and... got to work on those profiles though. We might need somebody to might need to talk to our sports info guy. To... You might have to beef his up. Yeah, I mean well, he's beef, he's beefing his own up. I mean he's just he's knocking people off. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean agree. right now right now he's in a situation if he's got to come out. He's probably going to be a guy who can win a MAC title <laughs> and be right there at the NCAA tournament. I mean, I like his chances. Yeah, stay tuned. We'll see what. Uh, stay tuned. I like that. Going. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I like talking about you guys did lose a MAC duel. You've lost one MAC duel, but it was a team not in your half, right? You lost a Northern, right? Yeah, we we lost a Northern at uh, Purdue duels. Um, Will that count? in the dual championships when you guys when it comes down the stretch will that actually count towards the title like say you run the the, the table because your your next uh couple matches are Edinburgh uh saturday lock haven ou edwardsville siu edwardsville mason kent state and bloomsburg and then Ryder. drex drexel doesn't matter but yeah will if you were to run the table on all these other ones and beat all the East opponents, I think Edwardsville is a West opponent, right? If you beat all the East opponents, do you guys win the East? Is it as simple as that? Simple as that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you've got room for error actually with Edwardsville, but no room for error against Edinburgh, Lock Haven, Ohio U, George Mason. Bloomsburg and Ryder too. But Kent State's in the West, right? Yep. Yep. So right now, driver's seat in the West is Northern Illinois. Yeah, I think so. They wrestle Central tomorrow night. So, so that'll of... that'll probably we'll know that'll probably be it. That'll be the one, is my guess. That's probably the championship for the West, but, wouldn't it be? Yeah, what's well, easy. I mean, you know, you never know, Zeb, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah you're right. It's, it's <laughs> tough. It's tough. like look at these Mac schools, it's a you know, if you're, I mean, we were, we were missing a couple guys in that duel, but we, I don't know how it happened. It was like one bad thing after another in that Northern duel, you know, we were just 30, uh, 33, 13 is what I just saw. I mean, yeah, we, we were know college duels get though. Diving closer underneath than that. our back and, you know, uh, just, yeah, for some reason that was uh that was a rough one. I'm sure it'd be a lot closer if we squared up again. Ludwig does a nice job at Northern and they're on the rise. So, I mean, I got to give them props. Yeah. He's been doing a great job the last couple of years, you know, and he's been there. Um, He's, t you know, turning the direction he wants it to. It's the program he wants. So he's doing a great job. We got I mean, sh props to him. Shout out to him. Um, Do you star the Lock Haven one? Does it, does it get an extra star? Does it, does it mean a little more to wrestle Lock Haven in a duel? And every time he's towed the line against Lock Haven, because your twin brother's the head coach there. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. I mean, we're, you know, we, we, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's one duel other than Kent. That's the other duel that, you know, we, you win that one and makes you feel good, you know? Um, cause, cause the same, like you're saying, Zeb, like these guys work hard. Like I know, I know how hard the, the lock haven coaches work, you know, my brother, Ronnie Perry, you know, his, his other helpers and Weichel and, um, you know, Carr did a great job when he was there. I mean, they, they put a lot of passion, effort and energy into that place. I mean, they're, you know, they got to grind to get everything they can get down there. Um, but you know, they, they, they put some real good teams together and they have, they have a good team this year. You know, I think they're missing a few weight classes, you know, that could make them, you know, another title contender, but by the end of the year, you just never know. I mean, um, I think they surprised some people last year and came through, but, um, yeah, I mean, this, this year's duel is no different. I think we're going to, it's going to be tight. 
you know, I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping we can get some of those swing matches. Um, some big, some big matches. I mean, 57 is going to be a big match 65. I mean, there's going to be some, looks like some really tight matches, some good matches. Um, 84, they've wrestled each other four times. Uh, 97. I mean, I feel like we got the advantage there and then heavyweight, you know, where's Isaac Reed? Is he coming out? Is he, is he not? I mean, so big, but big buck or our heavyweight. I mean, I feel confident in him and he's, he's making some gains. Like, He's he's a big boy, but he's starting to get wins. I mean, he had, you know, he had um Bullock from Indiana, took him in overtime, had his leg up, you know, that's a ranked guy. He's he's wrestled, you know, he's wrestled better than he ever has, and he still has, you know, technically two years left. So um, yeah, we it's, it's gotta come come together at the right time. And a lot, a lot will be told from uh, you know, the match against Lockhaven. And then OU two days later. So those are tough weekends and tough turnarounds, right? There's some travel obviously involved there. <clears throat> and uh, you know, you guys just you gotta you gotta get the job done. And that's gonna be one where it's east opponents. Well, OU's east, right? No. They're west. Okay. So west is OU, Kent State, Central, Northern, Edwardsville. Help me out. Yeah, what West is all the original Mac teams. The original Macs. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So, and then Edwardsville, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That makes sense. But yeah. The last, the last time we beat Lock Haven was my first year as an assistant coach at Cleveland state. And uh, I think it was 2015, 16 season. I think it was second semester. So I think it was 2016 that we took them out. So it's been, what? it's been a couple of years. What do you think you guys got to do? You know, like what your, how your brother's team got hot last year, how Lock Haven won the Mac. What do you guys got to do to do kind of emulate their performance? I mean, next year sounds like it's the year, right? But you don't want to wait till next year. You're competitive. You want to win now. And you got guys and you're going to take hopefully 10 to the Mac tournament. What do you got to do to emulate that performance? Kind of repeat what Scott Moore's team did with Lock Haven at the Mac championships last year. Well, it's, it's a team effort. I mean, you got 10 guys you got to get, I mean, if you can get nine on the podium and four in the finals, you're doing something, but you, everybody has to score points. That's what hurt us last year. Logan Heil wrestled an overtime match against Clarion kid. He made the finals. Like if Logan wins that match and makes the finals, you know, that's another 10 or 12 points. So yeah, you get, you get everybody, everybody has to place. And then you gotta you gotta get a couple champs. You know, we had one champ last year in Ben Smith. Um, we had Marcus Robinson in the finals uh, against the kid he, you know, was one and one against, I believe, and came up short in that match. But yeah, I'd say you gotta have two champs and maybe one other guy in the finals, and then just a handful of, you know, I mean, if not all 10 placing, you gotta get at least nine. Uh, but another thing too is bonus points. I think. It could have been last year. I think Lockhaven had some bonus points. So you throw in five or six pins, that's 10 or 12 extra points, and that could very well be the difference in a MAC title this year is just the bonus points. So, but yeah, for us, I mean, I, I mean, I'm I'm putting a lot of a lot of uh, I don't want to say pressure to make it <laughs> to stress them out, but I'm putting a lot of a lot of pressure on our older guys and Marcus Robinson, DeAndre, um. Anthony Perrine, if he wrestles the way he he can wrestle, he can get, he can make the finals, you know, and put it put a good game plan together, and we'll see what he can do against, um, you know, the, the I guess the best guy on paper, Ethan Laird. Yeah, big Bucky. Laird's if, a load, man. Yeah, big Bucky. If he wrestles his butt off, he can he can make the finals. You know, place. Hey, play listen, play. heavyweight. I talked to Coach Andersey last night. It's like a box of chocolates. You never know what never what you never know what you're gonna get with heavyweights. Well, you agree with that statement? Yeah, I mean, you're not gonna get a whole lot of scoring. I know that. But. No, but listen, Buck Russell tough against Slinger a pit. Slinger's a big guy. Slinger's obviously not their starter anymore. You right, know, yeah. the young guy that's a stud. Um, but Slinger's a big guy. Buck was in that match. It's a one takedown match. You gotta get a takedown in the third and you win. Buck's right there in those matches and like. He's so massive 
that presents a matchup problem for guys because Bucks 6'5", you no know, 280, 275, 280, right? Yeah, well, he's two, yeah, two, 280 before it works out and then 275 after. Yeah, B- Bucks a hoss. Yeah. yeah, no, and he's using, he's learning how to use his weight. Um, yeah, and but he yeah, wrestles that, hard. That, that match was just a little conditioning. And so we're, he's, he's doing some extra stuff to build that conditioning up. But I mean, that's, that's just a lot of weight to move around for seven hard minutes. Yeah. No question. Yeah, uh, he's, he's, um, he's, you know, he'll, he'll be in the mix. I mean, he's, he's only getting better. I mean, he's, you know, look, he wrestled, you know, maybe five matches that went the distance his last two years in high school. I mean, the kid didn't, even, he didn't even, wasn't even really wrestling. He was just going out there and tackling and pinning guys. So he's still learning how to use his body and how to put a few things back to back. And uh, it's getting, starting, starting to get it. Bucknovich was the midview midi, right? He was midview. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I like him. I like him a lot. Uh, how's your conference get back in the mix? Uh, you guys got shut out in the toughest NCAA tournament that you and I could ever even speak of. No all Americans last year for the Mac. No round of 12 ers last year for the Mac. Yeah. It was the toughest tournament, that, you know, because you had an eighth year guy who was an Olympian, you know what I mean? <laughs> who did an all American who got beaten in the round of 12. Who's a who was an NCAA finalist in years past? We so we know right there when I just say, and there were multiple examples like that. I don't think Chad Red placed last year, right? You can see all you know, uh, no Ironman placing. So, like, we can literally the data that I'm provided that wasn't the only three. That tournament yeah, was brutal, yeah, it was brutal. It was a brutal tournament. How do you guys get back in the mix and how does the Mac get more round of 12 guys? How does the Mac get more guys on the podium? And, and what do you do as a coach to strive for that, you know, on a daily basis? Cause I know we know that's how they measure you. You know, that's how people measure you. You know, at Kent state, when you got there, they had an all American and 20 some years, you guys kicked the door down on that with your male Porter. A couple of years later, you got an NCAA champion. You guys did a job, and I don't think you get enough credit for what Kent State did in that 10-year span. I'm giving you the credit right now that you're due for that and, and bringing the Nick Bedleons of the world in and the, the Drew Lashaways and uh, the Danny Mitchells and, and coaching them up, maybe feeding them some forearms, bouncing them off the walls, making them tougher. But what do you guys got to do to get your conference back to where it was 10 years ago? Yeah, I mean, that's – that's a good question. I mean, I, you know, the, the meetings we have with the Mac coaches, I mean, they're all passionate. They all want to obviously want their teams to do well, but the bigger conversation conversations that we have is like, how do we, how do we market and promote like the successes we're having throughout the year to get that exposure for our guys um, to give them a chance to make it to nationals. I mean, you know, if you don't make it to nationals, you don't get an opportunity and you've seen guys that barely make it to nationals that get on the podium. So we just, we just in a way need more, more chances, more opportunities. And that's uh, partially up to the coaches to get their kids in a position to win those big matches. Um, but yeah, I mean, for us, I mean, for every school, just recruiting, recruiting the right type of kids, putting them in the right culture. Um, and like we tell kids and parents and whoever we're we're recruiting, it's like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna provide a good environment for you. We're gonna work as hard as you need to work to become an all American. But at the end of the day, like, you know, we don't know how how fast you're gonna develop. We don't know how good you're gonna get. Um, but it's gonna be a heck of an opportunity, you know, to to see and and um uh, kids like Dylan Layton, um, Marcus Robinson won a match last year at Nationals. I mean you know, Ben Smith won a match before he's going to come back at a 197 pound weight class. It's going to be a little wider open. So you just need, you just need that one guy to break down the door. And that's, you know, for Cleveland state in general, that's what we're looking for. Who's going to be that one guy that, that says, you know what, I don't really care what the last 20 years brought. I'm going to get on the podium and I'm going to start something for this, for this team. So that's what we're looking for. Um, and that's kind of what happens at a lot of places that happened at Lock Haven there for a couple of years happened at the Kent when we were there. And um, you just, you just need to find that one guy that can knock down the door and get, 
the others to believe and show that it can happen at a certain school. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a challenge. I mean, no matter how you hack it, it's not easy. You know, people, I don't think most people, you know, realize how difficult it is not only to make the national tournament, but to be an all American at the national tournament. Um, it's, it's, it's so it, tough. I just it, don't it, think, and then for you guys it, to be that be like, well, how many all Americans when's their last all American? I, I don't like, I think it's unfair on my part as a media person. It's on, it's unfair on the part of the part of the fan. It's just unfair. And it's just, it's, it's all unfair all around. And you get that. But in the, at the end of the day, that's how they're judging you. It's like, yeah. who, who's your next Dan Carcelli? Cause that's your last all American 1994, 142 pounds. I want to say guy was a hammer, a Benedictine guy. He lives over here. He lives in Chesterland. He works a, like a mile and a half from my house. Super yeah. good guy, a crazy guy. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, think about it before, before there was Jim Rail Porter, Don Horning was the last all American that you guys had at Kent. Yeah. And I know you guys talked about that. I know you guys had to like, who's going to be the next guy. Who's going to be the next, who's going to kick the door down. And it was crazy. Cause the year you guys did it, you got two, you had two all Americans. You didn't just have one. You had two, you had Jermail made the semis and then badly on beat Joey Fio in the run of 12, the Oklahoma guy. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and he, was only, he was a true sophomore. I mean, he's a second year guy. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. it, it can be done. And it's like Nick Badley, I never won the state. Jamel Porter never won the state. Both state runner up, one in PA, one in Ohio. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can do it with guys, though. You can do it with like the guy, the guys we've talked about. One of them can do it, if not two. Right. I mean, but the, the biggest thing I was talking to Coach Anderson about is how the gap widens, though how the, the name image likeness has changed things. The free cafeteria food has changed things. The uh, different scholarships, academic scholarships have changed things. You guys are, the, the gap has just gotten wider between you guys and Ohio State. The gap has gotten wider between you and the power fives. The gap's just gotten wider. And I mean, this is just you and I, we're being honest. The gap has gotten wider. There's no question about it. And it's going to take a special person who's going to want to be like, no, I want to be here. I like the culture. Josh Morris coaches, coach Schroeder, coach Abinator, you know, all the other coaches you guys, have, they're going to have to like buy into what you guys do. Cleveland's gritty. You got to like it. You're in, the, you're in downtown. It's fun, but you got to get gritty and uh, you got to want it. You got to be tough and you got to be gritty. And it's just that simple. Yeah. I mean, you're hundred percent right. I mean, I guess the conversations we've been having with our team the last two weeks um, after Midlands was basically like, Hey, you guys are a great group of kids. You know, you guys work hard. We get good grades. I mean, we had the, you know, the third highest team GPA in the country the last two years, you know, Cleveland state, you know, state school, you know, no, nobody, nobody would think that we have, you know, kids that are excelling in engineering business, you know, health sciences, all that. Lions stuff. is a genius. Yeah, Lions is the top engineering student in the, yeah. at Cleveland State for for the sophomore yeah, ben, class. Ben Smith was engineering. You know, Buck Buck Navich is engineering. Dylan Layton's engineering. Um, Daniel Patton's engineering. So, so we 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 have some great kids. But what we said was, listen, like it's it's a it's an old saying that nice guys finish last. So. We need, we need to, we need to be tougher. And uh, yeah, we kind of started something. The Lake Erie match was, you know, the uh, Savage Viking award. Who's going to be a savage, you know, you can go out there and be nice and probably win a few matches, but until in the back of your mind, you become a savage and you're going to be physical and like Schroeder, his, <laughs> his speech in the Midlands in the hotel room was like, you got to be a little crazy. And uh, yeah. I mean, I know, I know crazy. <laughs> I was a little, I think all the best guys have a, a little craziness to them and that just, you know, their, their brain works a little different and, and they just won't be stopped. So uh, we're definitely preaching that to these guys, you know, talking to them about dominating every day, not just, not just, um, you know, being average, not just competing, not just winning, but trained to dominate. Um, so, so I think mentally, 
you know, we're trying to talk to these guys, um, talk to these guys about what it takes to be the best. Um, everybody's working hard. Everybody's lifting. Everybody's, you know, going to practice. But what are you willing to do, you know, that nobody else is willing to do? And and um, Do it that's, in Cleveland, Ohio. Do it in Cleveland, yeah. Ohio. And we got – and the one thing, like, Coach Schroeder's been doing awesome as far as, like, I mean, he's in the room – every morning putting guys through workouts, probably working out two times a day, you know, maybe, maybe three times a day, um, doing, doing an amazing job. Coach Abinader, we brought, you know, brought him in to work out with Deandre and Ben Smith and now he can work out with Perrine. So like when you, when you look at, you know, our assistant coaches, I mean, they've been, they've been some of the best guys in the big 10, you know, big 10 runner up big 10 champ. I mean, so, you know, our, our guys realize that now, and that's, that's, that's huge, you know, having those type of guys in the room and um, the stories they can tell and the, the, you know, the knowledge they bring on a daily basis um, is invaluable. I mean, these guys are, they're doing a great job. Dom Abinator made the Asian finals, the Asian championship finals, and he wrestled Yazdani in the finals. Did you know that? I did not. <laughs> He wrestled Yazdani in the final. It didn't go his way, obviously. Yazdani's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he made the the he made the Asian game finals versus uh Yazdani. He's good. I mean, he like <laughs> he's good. He's yeah, really he's really good. He 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 makes it look easy. Um and you know, that's you know, I mean, like I said before, like Ben Smith's been to the national tournament two times, but he's never had an upper weight coach in the room to roll with them and, you know, put him in his place, teach him a lesson once in a while. So now, you know, now he does. So we, we, we're doing the right things that provide opportunities for our guys to, uh, to do, you know, do what they want to do and accomplish the things that we think they're capable of. So. Yeah. Yeah. Lot, 2018, 2018, he wrestled, uh, he fell to Iran's uh, Yazdani Chirati, Hassan Yazdani Chirati, in the uh, Asian Game Finals, 10-0. 10 All right. Yeah, I mean, dude, come on. That guy rolls everybody up. I saw him beat up on James Green when he was like 18 or 17 years old in Vegas. I mean, Yazdani's one of the best to ever do it, man. I mean, and for, for Abinader to, to be at that level at one point in his career, and, and we're not that far removed from that, right? I mean – I believe that's the same year he was an All American in Cleveland for Michigan. You know, he's a St. Ed's guy. So that's great to have guys like that around. Though. Like you said, you got a Big Ten champ, you got a Big Ten runner up. So what are you up to? Are you on the move? What's going on? Uh, these kids are up here trying to trying to go to bed or something. Okay. Well, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, he's a, he's, he's doing good. So we'll, Worked out perfect. You know, so many, so many great guys in the Cleveland area, um, you know, so it's a, it's a, it's a blessing to have so many local, good, good coaches, good wrestlers, good programs. We're in it. We're in a great spot. <clears throat> when you guys go into a, a, you know, a living room and um, you've been in the situation you guys were in where the students reinstated the program. And then, you know, think about it. You're, you're reinstated. And then you've only gone up from there. In my opinion, you've only gone up from there. You make history last year. You got your first MAC champion. You had multiple NCAA qualifiers in the last couple of years. But like you're saying, you're ready to kick the door down. You're looking for your next Dan Carcelli. But next year, so let's say you don't have an All-American this year. But that's the goal, and we know that's the goal. But say we're going into 2023, 2024, we're in 2023. That'll be 30 years. That'll be 30 years next year since the last all American. Right. And, and what a better time in the 30th year anniversary. I mean, I, you want to see it in the 29th year, right? That's the goal. I think Marcus is a guy who's, who's dangerous like that. I think you got guys who can make some runs and get there and make some noise in Tulsa, but you know, how do you, how do you like just market it to the guys and how do you just get them to want to be a little crazy? Like coach Schroeder says, <laughs> Uh, well, it's, it, it's gotta be inside of them, you know? I mean, 
we can we can put him through hard workouts and talk to him about that kind of stuff. But let's be honest, like most of the time it's either in you or it's you don't have it, you know. So um I think you can do a few things to to get guys to believe in themselves, to get guys in shape, you know, work with guys on technique, but like I think those guys, the the guys that are special and the guys that are doing, you know, the big things, they're just, it's just in there. You know, they have that competitive nature. <clears throat> they have that little bit of just don't care attitude. Um, and they find a way, you know I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, look at, look at Nick Bedley on, you know, like that guy, that guy yeah, was he's a, little he's, nuts. He's a little crazy, but he's a little nuts. So yeah, it's it's, nuts. I mean, it's, I mean, these kids got to really, you know, it's, it's, it's when they decide, you know, coaches can tell, you know, they're, they're wrestlers till they're blue in the face. Like as parents, we can tell our kids <laughs> to do stuff or, you know, we tell them things, but you know, it's when, it's when they make that choice in their own mind and the, and, and their own lifestyle and decide they're going to make that commitment <clears throat> and decide, and truly believe in themselves that it happens. So, yeah, I mean, you just, and you just never know when that's going to happen. You know, yeah, uh, you just see guys that finally it, it, something clicks in their brain, you know, I don't know if it's someone talking to them or something they see or something they hear, or, you know, or, or if they're, you know, religious or what, what nobody a lot of times you really don't know what it is, but you just see it click and you're like, wow, that's, he's figured it out. You know, jump levels. Yep. So Friday, the 20th, I'm trying to get to that one, man. You guys got five home matches left, four dates, five matches. So I'm yeah, definitely interested yeah, in a lot Friday of home the 20th block Haven. I'm obviously Thursday, the night, Nick Nemeth might be coming Thursday, the night. Let's go. Let's we don't know. We're, we're going to see yet, but, um, yeah, I'm gonna definitely be at the Friday the twentieth and the Thursday the ninth. I'm excited. Um, uh, one last thing: the person who makes it possible when I show up, I'm able to cover your duels. One of your obviously greatest alums ever. If you look at his success in business, Guy Seiko does a fabulous job. Defense soap. Um, whenever I come and do your duels, he's the reason why. Takes care of me. Make sure that you guys are taken care of. I know they've done defensive duels there in the past and then they, they take care of you financially, but what's it like having guy as alum? He was an NCAA qualifier. He sponsors the 133, 133 pound weight class for all your duels. What's it been like having guy Seiko as alum and one of your biggest supporters at Cleveland state? No, oh, I mean, guy's been, guy's been the best since I arrived at Cleveland state. I mean, my brother had a good relationship with him from the start recruiting, uh, his son Gus, but, um, uh, yeah, just getting to know him more and more. I mean, the guy is the most generous person, not only to Cleveland state. I mean, he wrestled at Cleveland state, but he just, I mean, he's helps everybody, you know I mean? He's just a, a great person with a big heart. Um, crazy amount of time that guy puts into the sport, you know, helping, helping young wrestlers at West shore, to keeping in contact with them to, you know, to just mentoring these guys throughout their whole life. But yeah, he's, he's been, he's been great. Um, you know, got, I got to get out there soon. I've been telling that De Devin actually helps out with West shore. So he sees him a few nights a week, but I got to get out there soon to, to see him. But um, yeah, Does definitely Devin Schroeder ever not have his wrestling shoes on. Does he live, just live in wrestling rooms? Is that what Devin Schroeder yes. does? Well, that's why that's what we tell them. It's like, hey, when you're like a young assistant, that's what you do. You know, yeah. You just keep them on. It's gonna be easier. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I'll be, I'll be, you know, honest. Like Cleveland State wrestling, our program, you know, wouldn't be in the place that we're in without without guy. Um, and he supports us. I mean, win or lose, I mean, he wants to see us win, but um, you know, it's bigger than that. I mean, he he wants to see our student athletes do well. Um, he wants to see them be successful in the classroom and go on and, and be good people in life. And, um, you know, he teaches those skills to his youth wrestlers all the way up through. And, um, you know, that's one big thing that we talk to our guys about at Cleveland state, you know, it's not 
always about wins and losses, but it's about learning, um, being prepared for life and, and, uh, just being a good person. So I think we, uh, you know, we align well with what Seiko would want. Yeah. I'm a fan, you know, I'm a fan. The guy takes care of me and I appreciate everything he does. I'll tell you what, if you want the best sleeper product he's got, <laughs> these individual wipes, my friend, they will bail you out of the grease. I'm going to tell you, they've bailed me out of grease with my son's hiking. They've bailed me out of the grease hiking myself. They've bailed me out of the grease at tournament. You, na- you name it. This this thing is one of the most utilitarian things that Defensive has. And the reason he did that was because of the supply chain. He couldn't get these anymore. Uh, they were, okay. This used to be round. It's oval, like ovalish now. <laughs> this used to be like a round canister, and that was how they, they moved to that. So I use the stuff. My kids, I watched Thomas with it tonight, my five-year-old son. So, I mean, I this isn't snake oil. It's good stuff. And, you know, like you said, he gives a lot back to the sport of uh, wrestling. And he's Cleveland State alum, and that's why, obviously, bringing it up to you is Josh or uh, Scott had a great relationship with him, and then that turned into a business relationship and, like, a partnership. And I like that about him. I like that about the guy, you know, and he doesn't say no often. I don't know if you know that he doesn't say no often and he's just a generous guy and he loves the sport of wrestling and he supports it. So I love it. But, um, yeah, no, you're right. Do you have anything else for me after we spent 30 plus minutes on the audio? Do you have anything else for me? <laughs> no, no, Zeb. Appreciate it. We'll see you, uh, sure. A few other times. January 20th. I mean, you know, you're going to see me a bunch, but, um, January yeah. 20th, Lock Haven, your twin brother, Scott Moore, defending MAC champions. They're coming back into town. Then um, the Thursday, February 9th, Kent State at your place. So they'll, they'll be both home de- dual meets. And then um, MAC championships is in Fairfax, Virginia. That will be on March 3rd and 4th. And then the cha- the NCAA championships is in, I guess it's not no Tulsa. It says Oklahoma City. I thought it was Tulsa. Is that our website? Yep. I I thought it was Tulsa. Hold on. Let me see how wrong I am. Because I like to get things right here, Josh. I like to get things right. Okay. So let's just go. We'll go to Ohio State. Ready? <laughs> let's go. Because you know the Buckeyes aren't doing their schedule wrong. Because I did, were, you, were, you, were you under the impression it was Tulsa? I think so. Yeah. Hold on. Let's see. Here we go. Ready? Yep, Tulsa, Oklahoma, box center, BOK center. We'll get it changed up. Yeah, we'll get that fixed. I'm going to talk to your SID a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Oklahoma is uh, Oklahoma. We got, Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma. I agree with that oh, statement. We got old Gerald Harris out there. Gerald right? Harris, he's the, the the hurricane. What's his actual hurricane something? It's Yeah, Der- Gerald Harris is so tough, dude. He's from yeah. Tulsa. He's a CNC qualifier multiple times. Good guy. He's, awesome. he's an awesome guy. We should you should get him on sometime. You I like him? Gerald Harris. Gerald Harris. I luckily dodged the Gerald Harris bullet. That means I never had to take a beating from him. <laughs> <laughs> I got lucky. I got the steep A be- beating though. Oh yeah. 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 I got the steep A beating. He beat me like nine to two or something. I don't know. We have the old box score somewhere. Steep yeah, A think- hooked on old Z Miller. He put it on me pretty good. So yeah, we were looking through some old videotapes. I think we saw one of those maybe. Ah, uh, no, it was him against Michigan. He beat that guy. He beat yeah. Kyle Smith. Yeah. 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 He's tough. All right. Josh Moore, go Vikings. Thank you for the time. Uh, I will put this out quick, fast, and in a hurry. We'll have the Go Ohio Cast podcast. I believe we're in double digits now. Josh Moore, thank you for the time. Stick around. All right. You got it, Zeb. Thank you.